Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. We have an hour together for chair yoga. So first of all, I'm so glad that you're here taking this time. This is the hardest part of it is just getting to your practice. Everything else from here on in is nice and easy. Listening to me to listen to the cues. And then once you've heard them, playing a little and deciding for yourself what feels best in your body. So this is not like Simon says or Tony says, I say something and then you do it. Consider how your body's feeling, your energy levels, if you have any tender places in your body, and then how the movement suits your body as you move into it. Always start gently. Always move within the breath. So we're never holding the breath or forcing the breath or forcing our body. And then if it doesn't feel right, if there's any adjustments you can make to make it work with your body instead of against your body. And if less repetitions or slower or periods of rest feel better for you, then please um, give yourself permission to do that. And this is a recording, so at any time, if you've had enough, of course, then you can turn it off and come back to it at a different time. Your chair needing to be comfortable and stable, so there's no worries that you're gonna be um, sliding or falling off if you move. And then come to a comfortable seat for you. And it'll be different for each and every one of us, feet at a comfortable distance. Deciding whether you want the support of the back of your chair or you want to sit away from the support of the back of your chair, you get to choose. And then we'll make a little adjustment to our posture so we wake up our awareness of our posture. And then from there, we'll come into some breath work and we'll move from there. So rooting down through your feet. And a great way to start waking up the awareness to our feet is kind of to roll backwards and forwards through the feet, maybe shift the ankles a little bit, go from the inside and outside edges. And from there, maybe picking up the toes, spreading them nice and wide. You can even pick up the balls of your feet if you like, as if you were giving your feet a really big good morning stretch. And so often we don't even think about our feet, so we're gonna start all the way down there lie the balls of the feet if they were lifted and the toes softly down to the earth underneath you. Now whether you've got socks on, shoes on or bare feet, it does not matter. Take your awareness down to the soles of your feet and a way we can build our awareness is to soften the gaze or close the eyes. And as we tune out the outside world a little, our inside world and sensations and um, that language of the body that the body talks to us in gets a little louder. So noticing the support underneath your feet. Take a breath in when you're ready. And on an exhale, really soften into your hips, your legs, your feet, so you're relaxing any tension, any tightness. And allow the legs to be supported by the feet here. And then as you do that, notice your feet left and right, and then slowly start to just build up pressure as if you were pushing down into the earth, left and right. You might notice that you favor one leg over another, you put more pressure on one leg than the other, but see if you can build them up to about five or 10%. You might feel the muscles of your legs starting to light up, maybe even notice that in your belly or the crown of your head reaching a little taller. And then very, very slowly ebb that pressure away and relaxing the legs and the feet right at the end. Mm -hmm. And then to increase our awareness to the grounding places that were supported, take your awareness to where your seat meets the chair. And if you wiggle from side to side, you might notice, depending on the chair you're on, you've got two bony bits underneath you. That's gonna be the base of the pelvis. So again, left to right as evenly as possible. Notice if you're sliding more to one side than the other. No judgment, just a curiosity here. 
And if your shoulders are forward of the hips, so you're leaning forward, your tailbone's gonna be sending, um, um, sticking out behind you a little. And then equally, if your shoulders are back from your hips, you're gonna be sitting onto the back of your pelvis somewhat. So we're trying to stack the shoulders over the hips in your own way. And then we're sitting right on top of those sitting bones and the pelvis is more or less in a more neutral place than it was. And then take a breath in. On that exhale, sit the upper body weight down into the seat. So again, we're relaxing and releasing just kind of like we did with the legs. Getting that sense of groundedness as the pelvis and the feet support our body. And if you need to make any adjustments from there, please do. And then as if someone came from the pelvic floor and zipped up the center line of your body, the heart lifts a little, crown of the head reaches as the back of the neck lengthens, so we get just a little bit taller. So we have this rootedness, and as we connect down to that um, support, we can lift from there, we get the spaciousness. Rolling the shoulders back and down a couple of times, broadening across the collarbone so we have this openness through the chest space. And again, consider what feels right in your body here. It's not going to look the same as anybody else because it's your body, you have your own unique things going on, you're put together uniquely. Consider drawing the head back in space so it draws more in line over the heart space. And then with this, this might feel like a very natural sitting position for you, or it may not. So let's take a breath in. Soften the gaze or close your eyes if you haven't already. And then on an exhale, keep the shape as best as you can, but soften any tension, any tightness, make any small or big adjustments that feel more sustainable to you. And then notice this. So give yourself permission to rebuild the awareness and um, shifting our body into more alignment. And then we give ourselves permission to adjust that alignment for our own bodies. And this is what we'll do for the rest of the practice. So you're listening to me a little bit at the time, and then you get to adjust it and change it to suit you. With this groundedness, rooting to rise, this broadness here, let's check in with ourselves. And again, a great way to do that is to soften the gaze, close the eyes. And then ask yourself the question, how am I doing in this moment? Notice what comes up, no judgment. Just allow anything to bubble up that does. It may be surprising or maybe very familiar. No stories here, no, oh, of course, this is why I'm feeling because this happened. Stay away from the stories and just notice how am I doing? What's on your mind? So ask yourself that question, what is on my mind in this moment? And it could be Again, something that you're very familiar with, or it like, could be something that's surprising. It could be a million things, could be one or next to nothing. And then notice your body, how your body's feeling today. We notice this, and again, that language of sensation or energy levels. You might even notice how you notice your body. It might just be an inner knowing, or it may indeed be your awareness being called to different places. Notice if there's tension and tightness in your body, discomfort. And with a few breaths, out, exhales, or shift of the body, is there anything you can do to release that tension, soften it? And that may be an adjustment of posture. We have these natural tools within us to alleviate and help the body feel more at ease. And then start to notice your breath 
in your body. Notice this coming and going of the breath as it comes in and as it leaves and how the breath and the body do this beautiful dance together. So this expansion of the inhale, the softening of the exhale. The exhale always has that quality of letting go. The inhale always has that quality of bringing in energy. Starting to lengthen the inhale and exhale. It's all deepening that inhale, lengthening the exhale. In your own way, you can start to breathe in and out through your nose if that's comfortable for you. And if it's not, no big deal. Breathe in your own way. You breathe in and out through the nose. I suggest breathing in and out through the nose because that's the easiest way to um, regulate our nervous system. The nose is simply, the nostrils are simply smaller than the mouth. So the breath has to go slower. We slow the breath, the nervous system calms down. But if that doesn't feel like it's comfortable for you, or you feel like you're not getting enough breath, please give yourself permission to breathe in your own way. This is listening to me a little bit at the time and then choosing for yourself what feels better. Once we have that deeper, longer breath, we start to smooth it out. So smoothing the inhale and steadying the exhale. So it becomes more of a gliding of breath. And there will be places in the breath that don't feel quite so smooth, that's perfectly normal. Our breath changes all the time. So we're learning to cultivate this steadier breath. And you might even imagine, if you like this breath, as a circle. The inhale is round and up, the exhale is round and down. You can imagine a circle in your mind's eye if you like. Um, some people like to imagine it from the pelvic floor, inhaling up through the front line of the body, crown of the head is the top of that inhale, exhale down the back line of the body, either the feet or the pelvic floor being the bottom of the exhale. And this circle, circular breath, the smooth breath, um, gives us the opportunity to steady it out and connecting that to a visual. So every part of the breath is part of that circle. We never pause, we never stop. So in that way, we train ourselves to stop holding the breath so the breath becomes this fluid motion. We're going to use that seamless breath to move seamlessly as well as best as we can. So with this circular breath, if there's any forcing or straining of the breath, just sit back a little bit from that edge so the breath gets a little easier. It's still that circular, smooth breath, but just no straining. So it becomes sustainable. So if all we did for the next hour was to sit here and breathe in this circular way, it would be easy. And again, the smoothing of the breath is also regulating the breath and giving yourself permission to allow this to be effortless. So um, as easy as possible makes it very sustainable. And it also gives us a foundation from our, for our practice moving forward. So always coming back to this breath, I'll keep reminding you, we'll root down into the feet and seat, that connection downwards. And from there, the upper body grows. We get a little taller and broader, softening through the shoulders, relaxing the muscles of the face. And still we're connected to that steady breath. And then with the tip of your nose mirroring that circle, on the inhale, let's draw the nose to the right and up. I'm mirroring you, of course, exhaling left and down. Not a very big movement. Let the movement blend in with the breath. Every part of the breath being part of that circular breath. And you can keep your eyes soft or lowered if that feels good to you. If you don't feel in any way dizzy or if it feels like you're very stable here, then you can close your eyes. As you're melting the breath with the movement, notice how this feels in your body. 
On that inhale, remembering to lengthen through the back of the neck so we're not just compressing it and hinging on a joint to allow the back of the skull to kind of brush the top of the shoulders, trying to get some space in the neck, not making it a little smaller or shorter. And then at the end of the next exhale, we'll pause and take those circles around in the opposite direction. Again, blending the movement with the breath. The body loves it when we move in time with the breath. It's soothing to our nervous system. So all of this is geared towards that parasympathetic nervous system, releasing our nervous system from that stress response with our intentions and our practices. So we come into this place where the body is more in harmony. This is the place where the body can heal and can function optimally. Especially when we're living in a world or circumstances that are very stressful. The next time that chin comes down towards the chest, let's leave it there for a few breaths, allowing the head to get as heavy as it feels good to you, but drawing the shoulders back over the hips in your own way, keeping that breath going, really tuning into the back of the neck, the upper shoulders, the upper back here, noticing if you need to adjust anything. As we find that spaciousness through the back of the neck, the shoulders, and the upper back where we feel so much tension gathering in a lot of us. And then from here, crown of the head reaches all the way up towards the ceiling. So here we are back in our neutral spot. Let's drop that right hand down, giving it a little dangle. Joints are nice and easy here. And then on the inhale, we'll roll that shoulder up and in, down and round in a circle. So again, we're mirroring the breath here. A great way to do that is to close the eyes, following that circular breath, which that shoulder is guided by. And this doesn't have to be a big movement, but as smooth a movement as you can allow for. Let's take another one here and pause and then take that round in the opposite direction. You can always imagine a movement if you have um, an injury or discomfort anywhere rather than doing the same side twice. Um, it's very beneficial to imagine the movement as best as you can while staying in stillness. We're waking up the same neural pathways in the brain, connecting those neurons and building that awareness. Mm -hmm. Let's take one more here. Broad across the chest. Let's turn that palm out from the elbow. We'll inhale, fingertips up, exhaling down. Left hand on the side of the chair or supporting you with the leg of the chair if you want that support. Option to start to move from the shoulder. Inhaling easy joints. Arm comes up and down with that smooth, steady, circular breath. Option if it's there, and this is where you might need that left hand to anchor you. We can take that hand up and overhead as we tilt to the left on that exhale, getting the length through the right side of the body, and also activating that core if you're not using that left hand for support. Bigger isn't better here, so deciding for yourself what feels good, keeping that right hip really connected downwards. And let's take another two here, resting if you need to, going at your own pace, the pace of your breath, circular breath. Mm -hmm. And then the next time that right hand comes down, we'll leave it there and then take it back to support. Left arm dangles, nice and soft through the joints. And then from there with a circling through the shoulder, inhaling round and up, exhaling round and down. Keep that circular breath in your awareness, mirroring that smooth breath with the smooth movement of the shoulder as best as you can. I'm never looking for perfect. At the end of the next exhale, let's pause there and then we'll take it round in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. 
noticing where you feel this in the body, if there's any adjustments you need to make, making the movement smaller, bigger, and again, as I explained, imagined. Last exhale here, we'll pause. Taking that left arm out, bending from the elbow, inhaling the fingertips up, exhaling the fingertips down. Great place to stay right here, moving as if through honey or water, like there's resistance there. The option is to stay there or start to move from the shoulder. That right hand can support you on the side of the chair or the leg of the chair, should you wish those left fingertips to come up and overhead, finding that length through the left side of the body. We're starting to play with balance here, making sure the pelvis on that left side is anchored down. Let's take three more on this side, wherever it is that you are, knowing that bigger isn't better here. Keeping the movement in line with that circular breath. So the inhale guides up, we get to the top of the inhale and the exhale coming down. One more here. Mm -hmm. And then taking those hands back through center, any intuitive movement you need through your body to release tension, please go ahead. If you're sitting into the back of the chair, I encourage you to come forward, even if it's just a little bit, as we get down through the flexion and extension of the spine. Now we've done a little of the lateral flexion. Rooting down, feet in seat to rise from there, hands resting. On the inhale, let's open up through the heart, draw the shoulder blades towards each other, send the tailbone out behind you as the ribs come forward. On the exhale, pushing the back ribs towards the back of the chair, fingertips towards the knees, and we're rounding through the shoulders. So we're inhaling and exhaling. This can be as big or small a movement as you like. You can lift the chin on the inhale, lengthening through the back of the neck, drop the chin down towards the chest on that exhale. If you want to get into the cervical spine here, you can even push down into the feet on that exhale, rounding as we curl in through the lower back a little, getting onto the back of the pelvis, and imagine dragging those heels back towards the base of the chair on that exhale. Noticing how that feels. If you want to add on, let's take the arms up. Alternatively, on the inhale, let's raise the right arm up, exhaling it down as we tap towards the knees, and then going to the other side. That arm can come as high or as low as you like. If this takes away from the flexion and extension of the spine, keep the hands resting on the legs. You can stay here or for the next four, option to take both arms up as if you're holding a beach ball and exhaling down and round. Those hands can even come behind you, behind the hips. The arms, of course, are just an extension of the spine. And wherever you are, we'll take one more here. Coming all the way back through center. Let's keep those arms dangled down. Shoulders more or less over the hips. And the base of the skull comes back, so as if we're kind of leaning into an imaginary wall behind us. This is the inhale on the exhale. Let's dip those fingertips down and lift through the left shoulder so we get this length, left hip anchored down, inhaling up through center and exhaling to the other side. So making sure that the shoulders are stacked here. So um, normally what happens is one shoulder likes to slide forward as we tip. See if we can keep those collarbones wide as if we are, those shoulder blades are really connected to that imaginary wall. Mm -hmm. Option to stay here. Option to cross the hands over the um, chest. You can link those thumbs if you like. We're getting gravity a little higher here. Side to side, it's gonna be a little more challenging to keep those hips down. And 
hand, the last option here is to either interlace the hands behind the skull or if that feels like the arms are getting heavy, you can take the hands on top of the head, drawing those elbows as wide as feels good and then sitting the skull back in space so we're leaning against that wall again. This is the inhale, exhaling, coming to one side, inhaling up, exhaling, coming to the other side. So now we're getting the core involved a little bit more as the center of gravity gets a little higher. Keep that breath guiding you, that circular breath. And let's take two more either side, wherever you are. Noticing what you're noticing here, if you've got your elbows, um, bent like I have, you can lift through one elbow up towards the ceiling so you're increasing that length through one side and then the other. And then we'll come all the way back through center. And wherever you are, let's take those hands either up on top of the head or behind the skull. If you've interlaced the hands, interlace them the opposite direction, opposite thumb, thumb and first finger um, facing the earth or opposite pinky finger up towards the ceiling. And then from here, on the inhale, lift through the base of the skull and um, take the weight of the ha head into the hand suit. So we're lifting up through the heart. On the exhale, we're drawing the elbows in towards each other and rounding. This is just in the shoulders and the thoracic spine here and the cervical spine. So your torso is stable and steady. We're just moving through the very upper body. On the inhale, elbows wide, lifting up, giving that space through the heart space in that little thoracic back bend there. And on the exhale, we're curling in. Inhaling and exhaling. And again, it's very important to take the weight of the skull in the hands. So we're not straining the neck and throat here. Steady, smooth breath. Let's take one more. If there's any dizziness, please come back to a neutral seat, focusing on that circular breath. Let's stay for this exhale. Coming back up through center on an inhale and releasing the hands. Any kind of intuitive movement here to release tension. And let's take those hands down. Take a big breath in. Exhale it out nice and slow. Nicely done. Let's ease into those shoulders a little bit. So we're going to take the hands. We're going to take that right hand underneath, left hand on top, and just hold on to either elbows, forearms, wrists, or hands. Rooting to rise and then lifting up from there, broadening the collarbones. And for a lot of us, we might want to slide our hands a little bit further away. And then from here, keeping the heart facing forward, we're going to take the, it's as if we're kind of rocking a baby. We're going to take the elbows over towards the right, up, that's the top of the inhale, exhaling down and around. Now start to match this circular movement with your breath. You don't have to match my breath. We all breathe different lengths and different ways. So keeping the heart facing forward. Now you can stay here or start to allow the shoulders to come in to a gentle twist. So as we twist to the right, the left shoulder comes forward, right shoulder comes back and vice versa as we come to the left. Now you can take the gaze with you if you like, or you can keep the gaze forward. You can keep the gaze, um, inwards so you're closing your eyes and just letting the body move into the circular motion with the shoulders the circles with the shoulders do not have to be big they can be just in front of your heart space and your ribs and your belly or up overhead it's going to be different for each of us keep that smoothness of the movement though And let's take another couple here. Bringing the heart back through center. So now we're just moving through the shoulders, keeping the um, torso central. And then we will pause, come back through center, separate the hands. And this time the right hand comes on top, left hand to the bottom. This may feel different for you. 
Grasp the forearms, wrists, elbows, hands, roll the shoulders back and down and we're rooting to rise. Come back to that steady, smooth, circular breath. And then when you're ready with the heart facing forward to start with, we're taking the left elbow over to the left, up, down and round. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be a big movement. We're just getting into the shoulders here. Great place to stay. Or we start to allow those shoulders to come forward and back. Mm -hmm. Take the gaze with you or keep the gaze inwards. Allow this movement to be your own. So only going as far as that breath allows you. Mm -hmm. Notice what you notice about your body here. Let's take another couple of breaths. And then bringing the heart forward. Let's do one more circle with the shoulders centered. And then we'll bring that back to center, releasing that grip, taking the hands together, interlaced hands, elbows in, and we're gonna figure of eight those wrists. And now we're getting into the wrists. You can squeeze those hands um, into a firm grip or keep them nice and soft. The more we keep those elbows in towards the ribs, the more the wrists have to do the work, figure of eights. Option to start to allow those figure of eights to move the shoulders forward and back a little. We've already just been here. And the option is bringing the core into it, allowing those figure of eights to be as big or as small as feels good for you. Imagine kind of um, paddling side to side and you can reach if you want to, make it your own. There's no right, wrong way to do this. And then when you're ready, we'll bring those elbows in towards the ribs, start to square off the shoulders, and we'll pause, and then take those figure of eights around in the opposite direction, trying to get that as smooth as possible. And this is a perfect place to stay, especially if you've got a lot of tightness in the wrists and hands, or you can allow those figure of eights to get a little bigger as the, you get a little rotation through the shoulders and the spine. And the option here, is to start to make that a little bigger, getting into the core, a little bit of functional movement there. And then we'll bring that back so the elbows come back in. And we come back to those smaller figure of eights, releasing the hands, spreading the hands really, really wide, like you could shoot stars from fingers and thumbs, and then slowly, as if slow motion, you're curling in, making fists into as firm a fist as feels good to you, forearms lighting up, as if you're crushing a piece of paper into a tight ball. And then we'll spread those apart, getting that lubrication through all the joints of the hands, and then curling it in. Inhaling and exhaling. It's the slowness and the awareness here, which is the magic. And then let's do that one more time, staying for that exhale. And then when you're ready, just shaking that out a little. Any intuitive movement to release tension, please go ahead. And then from there, we're gonna take those feet a little wider. We've got that external rotation here. Ankles more or less under the knees. Don't worry if one side is very different rotation than the other. Just making sure that you feel stable if you wiggle and wobble from side to side. And come back to that circular breath here. Mm -hmm. So from here, imagining those lower ribs, kind of like a hula hoop. And on the inhale, with that circular breath, we're gonna be coming round and forward, a little um, extension of the spine, a little arch in the back. Exhale, we're gonna draw that round and back as if you're scooping your belly button in, as if somebody took an ice cream scoop and just scooped it out. And circular movement with that circular breath. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Great place to stay here, nice and small. 
if you want to stay there or starting to create a bigger circle maybe get the shoulders the head the neck involved if this doesn't suit you don't do it again you give yourself permission to do what feels good to you keep connected to that circular breath And then when you're ready at the end of one of your next exhales, let's pause there, take it all the way around in the opposite direction, smooth and steady. Inhaling and exhaling. as intuitive movement as you can allow for that to happen. And then when you're ready, we'll come all the way back through center and then heel toeing those feet back in through center. And we're just gonna watch those knees side to side. Rooting to rise once more, softening the gaze, coming back to the breath. Imagine or visualize or smooth out the breath so it is seamless, as seamless as possible. And again, we're never looking for perfect. Allowing the energy to settle, your breath to settle, thoughts and body to relax and release. And you can stay here for as long as you like, regulating your breath. And when you feel ready, I will join you down on the earth. You can bring the earth to you by lying on a reclined chair, a sofa, or a bed that feels firm and secure to you. And I will see you down there. Don't forget to bring everything you need for relaxation, extra bolsters, pillows, blankets, and I'll see you down there. Thank you for joining me down on the earth, the earth in your own way. We'll come down to our back and we'll continue with that circular awareness of the breath and bringing that into movement. So knees to the sky, feet to the floor. If you're not already there, take your time. Picking the hips up, shifting them a little closer towards your seat, lengthening through the spine. Chin drawn in a little bit. If your throat is tight here, then place a firm blanket underneath the back of your head, supporting your neck as well, um, touching the top of your shoulders. And then we draw one shoulder blade and another underneath us, so we get this openness through the chest. So this is the equivalent to rooting to rise and broadening the collarbones as we're seated. Soften the gaze and close the eyes and come back to that breath. Feeling the support underneath you, so gravity is different here, allowing your body to relax into that support. And then coming back to that steady, smooth inhale, maybe from the, um, maybe from the pelvic floor up towards the crown of the head and down the back body on that exhale, or simply smoothing or visualizing that circle and that breath. And then from here, once you're connected to that steadiness, let's draw that right foot in. And with that connection to the circle, let's start to circle through that ankle, pointing and flexing those right toes as you go in different areas. And then let's pause and take it around in the opposite direction. Flexing through that ankle now, coming back through stillness. Right hand on the right knee as the hand comes up towards the ceiling, lengthening the knee upwards. And then we'll circle through that knee. So as if you're drawing circles in the air. That left leg can stay exactly where it is, or you can lengthen that left leg long, flex the ankle, push the back body, including all the way down to that left heel down into the earth. And we'll create that circle still, 
um, with the knee, but I, we're actually getting into the hip joint, of course. If you don't need your hands to help your knee create that smoothness, then those arms can be um, in a cactus or a tea or another comfortable place for you. The option is here to keep that knee nice and bent, or as the knee comes away from you, you can strengthen um, through the hip and the core as you lengthen the right leg out a little longer. That ankle can even cross over the left ankle as it comes round and down, around and up, depending on which direction you're going in. Keep the movement as smooth as you can keep the breath. And then when the next, when that knee comes up towards the chest, we'll take that round in the opposite direction when you're ready. Again, with those nice um, circular movements. And this is again through the hip. And then you can extend the leg if you wish. And of course, that not only um, is a lot more weight because the leg is longer, but it's also getting into the knee joint a little as we bend and straighten. As smooth and as steady as you can make it. And then the next time that knee comes in towards your chest, you're going to keep it there. That left foot can be nice and long still, or you can bend it. And then we'll take that right knee out towards the right armpit. So we've got this um, um, dynamic tension from the right knee through the groin, and if that left leg is extended through that left heel, or if the left leg is bent, you can push down into the earth. Option to stay here. Option to take half happy baby, that right foot coming up towards the ceiling, take the back of the thigh, outside of the shin, ankle, or drawing down with the outer right foot. And that just depends on how long your arm reach is. So no big deal, wherever that is, one is not better than the other. Breathing into the groin here. Pushing down through the back body, wherever your back body is connected down to the earth. And then if that right foot is up towards the ceiling, let's bend that, releasing, drawing the right knee back and through center, and we'll take that right foot down to the earth. Next, drawing that left knee in towards us. You've got that circular breath going. And let's circle through that left ankle. Nice and slow. Flexing and pointing the toes so we get into the joints of the feet as well. And then let's take that round very slowly in the opposite direction. You get that control through the ankle which of course helps with our balance. The more awareness we have, the strength in the ankle and the feet, the more flexibility and stability. We have more um, balance. Let's flex through that ankle nice and softly, left hand to left knee, and the knee draws up towards the ceiling. And we're starting to create circles with the knee, which of course is really circling through the hip joint. That right leg can stay bent, fit to the floor, or extend the right leg. And circling with or without the hand, your choice. That left leg can go long as it pushes away from you, drawing the knee as it scrapes up towards the belly and across the upper torso. Adjusting the movement to suit you. Your breath is, of course, connected to that circular breath. And then we'll pause when you're ready and take those circles around in the opposite direction. That lubrication through the hip. Mm -hmm. Smoothing it out, steadying it out, just like you did with the rest of your practice. Rest whenever you need to. Let's take another few here. Be gentle with yourself and making sure the movement feels as smooth as you can create it. Next time that knee comes up to meet you, let's give it a little hug and then draw that left knee out towards the armpit. Right knee can be bent, fit to the floor or that right leg still like still or now you can extend it, opening up through the groin. We push down through the back body. Collarbones are still broad, heart is still open. And then you can take half happy baby here, either with the right knee 
bent or straighten the long side of the earth. We're opening up through the left hip here, drawing the knee down in your own way. Circular breath, never pushing past the breath, never holding the breath. And then when you're ready, in your own time, we'll release the left foot, drawing the knee in and taking the left foot down. If that right leg is extended, let's bring both knees to the ceiling, feet to the floor. Steady the breath once more. And then push into both feet to drop the belly button down into the earth. So the lower back is now imprinted a little. We've got a little tuck of that tailbone. And the collarbones are broad here. Keep connected to that circular breath. And we'll bring the knees and ankles in towards each other. And then lift the feet off the floor, drawing the knees over the hips. The further, the closer they are towards your chest, the easier this is going to be. The further over the hips that they are, then the more challenging this is going to be to keep the belly button down into the earth. So we've still got that pressing down of the lower belly into the earth. From here, keeping the knees and ankles in towards each other, on the inhale, let's take both feet up towards the ceiling. You can keep a nice bend in those knees or towards straight. And then we'll drop the heels, bending through the knees, over towards the right side, down and round, so they almost scrape your seat. And then inhaling up through the left side and up towards the ceiling. So we're creating circles with the feet here. And if you're a little flex in those ankles, you're going to get a little rotation through the hip here. So you might even notice if you place your awareness on the back of your pelvis, if the back of your pelvis was a dial like a, an analog clock, then you might even notice that as the feet come up towards the ceiling, that clock is, um, let's say, um, at the top of the pelvis, that's about 12 o'clock, and we're taking it round, going um, anti-clockwise down to 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock is where the heels come down towards the seat, 3 o'clock and back up to 12. So you might notice that rotation through the hips. And again, the further those knees come away from your nose, then the more challenging this is going to be for the core of the body. Next time those feet come up, let's pause there and take it round in the opposite direction. There's a lot going on here. We're kind of moving through that lumbar spine, getting a little that fluid motion here as well as that deep core. We've got the strength and the stability. We're connected to that circular breath and also adjusting things as you need to. You can pause whenever you want. Let's take another three breaths here, resting if you wish. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Next time those feet come up, let's bend those knees, take the feet to the floor. Hands resting at the side of the hips here. Come back to that circular breath. And then on the inhale, pushing into both feet, lighten or hover the hips just a little bit off the earth. Exhale, we're tapping down. So you're taking the, um, the weight of the pelvis here through the shoulders and the legs, inhaling up, exhaling down. Don't worry about the height of the hips here. When we tap down with the pelvis, we're not tapping down 100%, we're tapping down maybe 30%. So we're still um, keeping that core activation that we just awoke. And then the inhale here, maybe it is that you lift the hips a little higher, but not so much that the breath stops flowing. Inhaling and exhaling, making sure that the feet are evenly pressing down. You're not trying to push more into one foot than the other. Keep that circular breath in your awareness and stay here tapping down or we lift the hips and we stay three breaths, pushing into the feet, the arms, the shoulders, and keeping that fluidity 
Never coming to a place where the hips are pushed up so high that you feel like you're locking in place. There should be a softness here. If the knees are going out wide, imagine there's a block there drawing them in, so there's a firmness. Let's stay for the last breath, and on that exhale, slowly, slowly taking the hips all the way down. Walking the feet as wide as the mat here, arms coming to a comfortable position, and then we'll wash those knees side to side. A little or a lot, massaging from the outside of one hip to the outside of the other hip over the back of the pelvis, and take the gaze away from the knees if you wish. And then when you're ready, bringing those knees up through center. Big breath in. Exhale it out nice and steady and slow. Allow the body to soften into the surface underneath you, relaxing and releasing. The last option here is to draw both knees in, give yourself a little hug, rock and roll from side to side. And if you want to, maybe walking all the way from one side of the body all the way kind of to the other side. Any other movements you need here, you can take those knees wide, curling in, nose to knee, any other movements you need here. And then when you feel like you've completed your practice, we'll be coming into relaxation, either constructive rest, knees bent in towards each other, ankles wider. You can come on your side, on your back, on your belly. You can come to seated if you prefer. And then as you get yourself nice and comfortable here, please take the time to notice what it is that your body needs. So much of the time where we come into a shape and we're like, it's fine. So what if you offered yourself more than fine? What if you took the time to really allow yourself to get that extra layer of clothing, maybe softening the lights or closing your eyes, placing like a clean black sock or an eye pillow over your eyes? Adjusting your body so it feels just a little more easeful. Let me take a big breath in when you're settled. Hold at the top and then exhale it out slow and steady. And as you exhale, release the body down into the earth. Let's do that a couple more times. Big breath in, hold. And then when you feel ready, releasing and letting go. And then on one of your exhales, releasing the breath altogether. As we settle down and settle in. relaxation is one of the most important parts of our practice as we give ourselves permission to unwind and soften we get to integrate our practice and in on the very deepest level of our body So continue with every exhale to imagine that you could soften or relax your body a little deeper in towards the earth. Relaxing tension and tightness. And with those exhales, consider on those exhales that you also pause the thoughts just for the exhales. So you get to the top of the inhale, press pause on those thoughts, and then just let the body, 
the mind release just for that exhale breath. The inhale, the thoughts can come back. Exhale, just pressing pause and allowing that little bit of relief and release. No expectations. No thinking about the past or the future. The exhale of this moment only. Riding the exhale wave down to the end of the breath. Staying here for as long as you like, tuning my voice out if you wish to stay for longer. Or starting to bring your awareness back to your body as it rests in this moment. Noticing the support underneath you. the space around you. Notice your breath and your body just as it is, no need to change it. Starting to deepen the inhale just a little, as if from the toes up to the crown of the head, and on that exhale, just that soft sigh of the exhale, that letting go. Inhaling, inviting energy in, exhaling, allow that energy to settle and stay. And allow that breath to bring lazy, slow, intuitive movements, awakening movements into your body. If you wish to move, if you simply wish to stay a little longer, please do. And maybe those movements ripple from your extremities, your fingers, your toes. You may want to bend in your elbows or your knees, give yourself a hug or bend the knees wash from side to side depending on where you're seated or intuitive movement that just feels right to you after your practice. Mm -hmm. And finding your way to a shape that you feel is the best way to finish up your practice today and taking your time settling into wherever it is that you've chosen allowing your body to really be connected down to the earth and from that connection we rise hands into any gesture that suits you today 
We'll take a breath in and on an exhale, dropping the chin slowly towards the chest and noticing how you're doing in this moment. Your mind, any emotions, your body. And it's that subtle shift from the beginning of class to the end and what you notice. Thank yourself deeply for your practice today, for honoring yourself with shape, changing and shaping your practice to suit and work with your body and what feels right for you. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you for being here.